the layover one. From the previous video, some of you were interested on how to create topography with design options and phasing. So to show different design options with a topography and phase it in existing demolishing and new construction. And today I will be illustrating this to you. So let's start with actually um, playing with our existing terrain, existing topography, and this was modeled perfectly from point cloud. And what I will be doing is I will make sure that my terrain, my topography is actually in existing and my view is in phases in new construction. I will be going on massing aside, graded region, and I will be selecting create a new topography based on parameters points only. The reason for this is I don't want to have exactly like the previous one. It has a lot of points. I don't want to mess up with uh, too much power for my computer. So I will choose this one. I will simply select this terrain. And it will take a couple of seconds in order to generate the terrain. And once it generates the terrain, I'll be able to do the design. It will take a couple of seconds to generate the topography. Once the topography is created, what we can do is we can start easily place our points where we want. So we have the perimeter over here along the side. So what we need to do is we need to play with the surfaces. Now I want to make sure that uh, my, obviously the initial part of this place, I want to have it at zero because I want people to be able to walk through here. And then I want afterwards this garden to be stepped down so I can easily go minus one meter and I can step it down from this point. I need to just make sure that because I'm in a perspective and the points might go outside, therefore I always suggest you to work in a top view. And then you can do the points and then you can step it down as it goes. The question is that how do we do the second design option? So obviously I'm here making a mess right now and it, it requires really more time and I don't want to spend that much time on the design in, the, in this YouTube tutorial. The question over here is, how do we really do with the design options? Because right now I have, it's, it's in the main model and I did already new phasing and yeah, it's going to be really tough. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to cut this and then I'm going to go in the manage design options. Obviously the last time we had a facade option and I will make a new design option set and rename it saying topography. And in this one, I will create, again, three options. The first one being primary, and I will close it. And I will go in the first one. I will do the same method I did last time. I will go modify, apply, paste to the current place. And then I will be actually able to go on the next design option and do the same thing. And then go next one and do the same thing. And I will be able to go inside the perimeter model and start playing with, with a topography. Points. And then I will do this one, one meter. So now you can see that in my design option tree, I have this kind of shape, but in the option one, I have this shape. But if I go in the it's in the new construction right now. If I go to the existing, you will see the existing terrain regardless the option you are in. And if you play with the phasing settings, you'll be able to actually showcase in different colors what part of the side was excavated and what part of the side needs extra soil. And you can also hit the schedules and see how they work. So let's do it together. If you go to manage and phases. Here you have graphic override and you have demolish in the new. So you can see that the new is shown in red and demolish is in yellow. Perfect. And then I go in a new phase filter and I add one here called my option. Or I will say demo. I'll just call it demo like that. And I want the, the demo to show, you know, like in the, the new to be not displayed, the existing to be by category and demo to be overridden and temporary not to display. 
Now, if I go into the from the existing to the new construction complete, and if I do from the complete to the demo, you'll be able to see what has been demolished here, and you'll be wondering why I'm not seeing that carved area because Revit actually demolishes it, treats it as, a, as if it is demolishing the whole topography. Therefore, you will not see partially demolishment. It will be seen as if the whole topography footprint was demolished. And if you go into the design of like the phases, and if you go phase filters, but if you do in this one demo, if you do overridden and show the existing node display, and then this one, maybe we can show both. In that case, you'll be able to see both scenarios. So you can see what has been excavated and what records extra soil. If I go to the schedules and right click in new schedules from topography, I can actually get the new construction topography or existing topography and even get the net, net cut, the project surface area, projected area and net cut and fill. So this is really important if you want to get quick estimates and even if your site is accurate, like in our case it's based on the, you can see all the accuracy based on the point cloud, you will really get very accurate schedules. You need to just add the labor and the cost. Please comment below if you ever extracted net cuts and fills from Revit topography model. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We're going to share free content every week for you so you will be the first person to be notified. Don't forget to turn your notification bell on. See you next time.